when we die, our works are going to go with us into eternity. Our works cannot save us, but our lifestyle, and when I'm talking about our works, I'm referring to our lifestyle, the lifestyle that you are living, and it encompasses everything. Because as children of God, the Lord God is expecting us not to be conformed to this world. And by that, the Lord is not talking about having part of our lives conformed to his will, but he's talking about having our entire life conformed to the will of God from the way we think, from, to the way we talk, the way we dress, how we act, how we live our lives, the things we watch, the things we listen to, the things we find entertaining. It means everything. That is what holiness is. Holiness is not partial. Holiness is not just dressing modestly, but living in sin secretly. And holiness is not just praying, but living your life like an, an unbeliever. Holiness is not having faith in God's promises, but living a life of disobedience. Holiness means living our lives to the glory of God, and that means including every, each and every area of our lives. And I cannot emphasize to you how precious this moment that we have is when we are still alive. It is very, very precious for us and very important. It is very important for us to make things right with God. Just a few days ago, there is a young man whom I know who died. This person was very young. I didn't really know him very well. I just saw him a couple of times. So the first impression that I had, I remember, was about how he looked so young, you know, like because he had a, like a baby face, because he was chubby and had like a baby face. And I, I remember thinking to myself like, oh, this guy actually looks like a baby on the face, you know, because he was chubby and all that. And he was very young. He was so full of life. But then he just died in an accident. And when I heard about his death, I started to think about how we often postpone salvation because we, we are blinded by the things of the world. They always seem so attractive. They always seem so precious, but they are fleeting and passing away. And the Bible says that it is appointed for man to die once there after the judgment. And the thing that you're going to carry with you to the white throne judgment is your works. The Bible says that each man is going to be judged according to their works. This does not mean that it's our works that are going to save us. For the Bible says that it is by faith that we are saved. But how is Jesus going to prove that your faith was real? Because real faith is accompanied by works. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. If you truly do believe in Jesus, your works are going to be a testimony. The Bible says that let he who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Because it is a very, very serious thing to call yourself a Christian, but to continue in deliberate sin. And that is why if you are a Christian and you continue in your sins, you're going to get worse punishment in hell than a person who never even knew about Jesus. Jesus gave an example where he said that the servant who knew the will of the master but did not do it, Jesus said that that servant is going to get more punishment than the one who did not even know the master's will. He too will perish because there's only one way of salvation and that is through Jesus Christ. And if you know what your master wants you to do, which is a life 
that glorifies the Father. You know, Jesus talked about repentance from the beginning of his ministry until the very end of his ministry. You know, people, people try to paint this wrong picture of Jesus as though Jesus was tolerant of sin. You know, they want to make it look like if Jesus was living in our day and time, Jesus would accept sinful practices. No, but Jesus said, unless you repent, you too will, li will likewise perish. Jesus talked about repentance when he met sinners. He didn't comfort them in their sin. He did not tell them to say, go and continue sinning. But he would always tell them, go and sin no more. Jesus' character is to show mercy to a sinner. But once he shows that mercy, he does not tell the sinner to go on in their sin. He says, repent. He's willing to forgive you no matter what you have done and no matter what kind of sin you are in right now. Jesus is willing to forgive you this very moment and to bring you to eternal life. But he is not expecting that after he has forgiven you today, that the very next moment you go back to the mud. Jesus is not expecting that. Jesus wants you to repent and to bear fruit of righteousness. The Bible says that we cannot continue sinning deliberately just because of the grace of God. God's grace calls us to repentance. And so the Bible says that if we deliberately continue in our sin, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for our sins, but a fearful expectation of God's judgment. That shows you Jesus is not lenient on sinners who want to continue being sinners. Jesus is lenient on sinners who realize their sin and then turn from it. Jesus went where sinners are because it's sinners who need to repent. And he went and preached the good news to them, the good news of repentance, that if you repent this very moment, it doesn't matter what you have done in life. It doesn't matter if you have been a drunkard, if you have been a fornicator, an adulterer. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter if you have committed abortion. It doesn't matter wh what you have done. If you repent this very moment, Jesus Christ can forgive you and wash away your sins and make you a child of God. But Jesus is saying from now on, bear fruit of righteousness, bear fruit showing that you have truly repented. So one day, I woke up and I had a very normal day. I wasn't even feeling sick. Then in the evening, when I was home, this was the time, this was during the period when I used to have high blood pressure and I used to have the attacks like, it wasn't like I was constantly sick, but I would be healthy, then I would just get very, very sick all of a sudden. And so I was home alone. On this evening, I was with my son. And then I suddenly felt like my heart, I felt my heart beat so fast. And the next thing that I knew was that I couldn't see anything. Like all I remember was just, everything just went black. Like I couldn't see anything. It was more like, I stopped existing for a while. I passed out. And then I woke up. And when I woke up after a few minutes, I decided to lie down on the bed. And when I, lie, when I lay down on the bed, down on the bed, all of a sudden, I just, it, ha it all happened so fast. It wasn't even something that I had thought about to say that this would be the end of my life. I had no idea that this day could be the end of my life. But when I lay down on my bed and my spirit left my body, I was just, I didn't go out, but my spirit was clearly out of my body. 
because I found myself like I was floating on top of my body. I could see that I was still lying on the bed, but I was like in mid air. I was in mid air and I was going to die because of the hypertension that I was, that I was having. And I tried to hold my son and I couldn't touch him. That's when I realized that I was dead. That's when I realized I couldn't touch anything physical. I couldn't interact with anything physical because now I was in the spiritual realm. And during this time, the only thing that mattered to me was my life with Jesus. Everything else just gets silenced. Everything else just fades away. You know, when we're here on the earth, alive, when we're still healthy, when we still think we have so much time on earth, we have all these voices speaking to us, the voices of our friends, the voices of our colleagues, the voices of our relatives, you know, who, who pass their opinions about our belief and our lifestyle, our Christian lifestyle, you know, they pass their opinions and then we want our lifestyle to suit what they expect. But I want to tell you, as someone whom God made to experience that moment of death, because I experienced it, the time when I had hypertension, when I had high blood pressure, during this time, the only thing that was going through my mind was Jesus, that's it. All those things of what are people going to think of me? You know, people are going to think I'm crazy if I truly follow Jesus. What people are going to think maybe I'm, I'm this or I'm that. I'm not smart enough. I'm not cool enough. I'm backward or whatever. All those things won't even cross your mind. That very moment, the only thing that you're going to think of is you are going to realize the most important thing on the earth is to please the Lord God and to live your life in a way that pleases the Father. That is the only thing that matters. Nothing else. Nothing else matters. And I remember during the same time, I, and when I was there like in mid-air, out of my body and I called on the name of Jesus. I called the name of Jesus three times. I called Jesus the first time. I called Jesus the second time. And the third time I called out to the Lord Jesus. And I said, Lord Jesus, you are the one that I depend on. And when I said that, I found myself back in my body and when I was back in my body I was still extremely weak I was shaking a lot I couldn't even hold my phone like if I tried to hold my phone it could just fall out of my hand I remember I just had to put my phone down and then uh, call my mom on the phone I called my mom on the phone and I just I had to, to lie down, like to put my ear close to, to the phone and to tell my mom to say, I'm extremely sick. And I also called my husband and to tell him how I was extremely sick. And by the time my husband came, I was still shaking like tremendously. I was extremely weak. I couldn't stand. I was just lying down. And I knew that no matter what, this is the end of my life. And I had thought that I had so much time ahead of me, you know, because we think that, oh, the human lifespan is maybe, people usually think like, oh, maybe nine, uh, 90 years or 90 something years, that is the human lifespan. But your, li your life's your life could be as short as 18 years. Your life could be as short as 25 years. And I was so young. I didn't even think that my life could end just like that, but it would have ended without any notice to say, 
get your life right with God because the notice God is giving us is right now. While we are here, while we are still healthy, this is the notice that we have to prepare for eternity. There are so many things that we value as important, as more important than God. But the most important thing you can ever do in your life is to make sure that you are right with God, that your sins are forgiven, and that you are living for the Lord Jesus in every area of your life, that you are truly surrendered to Jesus. And I remember during this time, as I felt my life fading away from me, I remember thinking about how, how our lives are extremely individual. Like, we are extremely, it, it's a very solitary journey, your journey with Jesus. It's very solitary. You need to have a personal stand. And I remember during this time, like, I re even though I love my husband, but I remember during this time, I was thinking to myself that, because I was thinking about my son, my son was only months old, and I was thinking about my son, like he's going to grow up without a mother. And that was the reason why I was begging the Lord to help me to stay. I didn't want my son to grow up without his mom. But I remember during this period, I was thinking about how during death you get so detached from even your, your husband or your wife. Because I wasn't having anything like, any feeling like, oh, if I, if I die right now, I wouldn't want my husband to marry someone else. No, I didn't even feel anything like that. I actually felt like I was getting emotionally disconnected from my husband because now I was entering the spiritual realm. Because there's so many people who are failing to save Jesus because you want to please your husband or your wife. I have seen people, I have seen people who try to please their spouse more than Jesus. And then such a person dies and their spouse remains here on earth, still with a chance to make their life right with God. Because as long as you're here on earth, you still have a chance. You can still get right with God. So the most important thing for you is for you to make sure that you are right with God. Then you are in the most safe place. It doesn't matter even if your life is going to end suddenly, or if you still have a hundred more years on earth, but just make sure that you run this race in order to win. Don't turn back because the crown of life, the Bible has promised. The Lord Jesus promised the crown of life to everyone who endures to the end, not to those who turn back. Remember that the word of God says that narrow is the way that leads to life and very few find it. That means that we need to have our own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't follow people. Don't be influenced by people. When you are going to die and be lying down there, your body is going to be lying in the morgue, but your spirit is going to have to go to either heaven or hell. And none of those people are going to be able to save you. The only thing they're going to say is rest in peace or too bad. But whatever they say about you is not going to change where you are. The only thing that is going to determine where you really will be is the choices you're making right now. Are you living for your own pleasure? Or are you crucifying your flesh by obeying the Lord Jesus no matter what? Is Jesus Christ truly your Lord? Is he the one you live to honor? Or do you live to honor everyone else but the Lord? Are you living for the glory of the Lord? Eternity is very close. Sometimes it seems like an imagination. It seems like a place that doesn't exist. It can come in a second. It comes so suddenly. The Bible says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the word through him may be saved. That salvation that is in Jesus 
is found when you repent of your sin. If you continue in your sin and claim that you believe in Jesus, you are bringing shame to the name of God and there's nothing else that awaits you but great wrath and punishment from the Lord God. The day of repentance is today. You cannot be too young to repent. Don't say, I have many years, I'm still young. You do not know when your end will come. I did not know that that day would have been the last day of my life. I did not know. And what if I had lived my life carelessly, thinking that I'm so young, I cannot die. This is the time to prepare. This is the time to be ready. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is like the man who found a pearl of great price. And when he had seen it and recognized its value, he went and sold all he had just to get it. That is what the kingdom of God is. It's more valuable than anything. It's worth losing everything for. Jesus said that unless we love him more than we love our lives, we cannot be his disciples. Jesus said that whoever holds on to his life is going to lose it. But whoever loses his life now is going to save it. That means if you continue in your sin, just because you say that you are enjoying it, you're not willing to let go of it, you are going to perish. But if you let go of your sin, the sin you love, you let go of it just because of the kingdom of heaven, you are going to save your life. We are never safe until we are right with God. The only safe place is to be in Jesus. The most important thing you have to do before you do anything else, make sure that you are right with God. Because when you are right with God, then you can live your life and you know that whatever hour and time that death is going to call, you are going to be ready. Whatever time death will come knocking on your door, you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven and you're going to enter eternal life and the reward of the righteous.